Obadiah, verse 15. For the day of the Lord, that second advent, is near upon all the evil. Okay, that's near. We've been over 2,000 years on this side of Calvary. God is patient. God is long-suffering. When he writes in Obadiah that the second advent is close. Upon the heathen, that's when Jesus Christ comes and judges the nations. And he separates them. The sheep nations that helped Israel in the tribulation period, that blesses Israel, and then the goat nations that didn't help Israel cursed Israel. The sheep nations go into the millennium and the goat nations go into hell. As thou hast done. And what Esau and Edom has done, the brother of Jacob, is they judge Israel. And you reap what you sow. They have judged Israel to be at fault, and that's it, and they were. But when it comes to Israel, you leave them alone and let God take care of them. And God will take care of it. Now you can't say that for a Christian. Because what we have, what we call, and it's not practiced, the church discipline. When, when we have a Christian or Christians involved in sin that are gross and detest and against the body of Christ and against what the Bible says, we are to act upon those individuals. We are to give them church discipline, not utterly refuse them until they repent. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head. You're going to get what you deserve. The whole thing of Obadiah is what you did to Israel and it's written out in Genesis 12 and then when Isaac blesses uh, Jacob you're going to get a curse because you cursed. You're going to want God to forgive you, let you go like you know that Israel pleaded when, when Esau grabbed them. Come on, come on, man. Let, let us go, let us go. No, no, don't bring us to Babylon. For as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, they went into Jerusalem with the Babylonians and the Chaldeans, And the wine and the water they drank. They filled their, their bellies. So shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, they shall swallow down. And they shall be as though they had not been. You know, we all need water to survive. That's what we do. That's what everybody did. They I'm gonna have a drink now. Many people. Most people, except for under hospital care or people who need a IV solution, drink. And then they die. 
And after time, they're forgotten. About the time of the great-great-grandchildren, or the great-great-great-grandchildren, you're a memory. And then you're a memory gone. And in hell you have no name. You have no identity in pitch blackness. In the sulfur, in the burning, in the torment. We are told about Abraham and Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. But all Jesus said about the man that was in hell, the rich man. What's his name? Who knows? If his name is not in the Lamb's Book of Life, his name is not in hell. You have no identity in hell. And possibility when the Christians get to heaven, within time there's a possibility we're going to get a new name. But upon Mount Zion, Jerusalem, Second Advent, shall be deliverance, not for Esau. There shall be holiness. That ain't today. It, whatever you, you know, you may call it Zion, but the Lord Jesus Christ is not, you know, most of these black churches, you know, they'll call themselves Zion. Like the Second Advent has already happened. And most of them, political churches, their Jesus, their salvation came from the Northern Army. That song, you know, my eyes have seen. The no, you didn't see Jesus. You saw a bunch of federal troops come and tell a bunch of people, hey, you can't have slaves no more. Meanwhile, the ones up north had slaves too. There's more than slaves. It was a complete takeover of the United States. Get everyone, so you can't have your independent state. The house of Jacob, that's Israel, 12 boys, shall possess their possession. That land will be settled one day by Jesus. And even the, the boundaries are changed according to the Revelation in Ezekiel. But all 12 of those boys are going to go in that land. That land will be theirs. And if you call it the land of Palestine, you are in great error, because it's never the land of Palestine. It's the land of Israel. But your pastor don't know nothing. Because Palestine only had this little chunk or the PLO, or whoever they are today are. The house of Jacob shall be a fire. Fire pictures judgment. The house of Joseph, that's the son that helped Egypt and all Israel survive during the seven years of, of the Great Famine. That was the firstborn child of Rachel. When, Ru when Reuben sinned against his father by sleeping with his, 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 his father's wife, I mean, when it comes to Jacob, it, 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 it's all messed up. That firstborn right should have gone to Joseph. But when we're talking about Joseph, we're talking about, as far as Benjamin, when, when Judas stepped up to his father and Joseph, leader, second leader of all Egypt, he says, listen, I will be a surety for Benjamin. Now remember, Reuben said, slay my two sons. Oh, you didn't really love your boys too much, did you? 
That is just, you know, we say just as bad. As a man's name, I'm going to make, well, here's my two daughters. Take what to do what you want to do with them. That's just as bad. Judah stepped up to Joseph and said, excuse me, not knowing who Joseph was, excuse me, sir, instead of Benjamin going to jail and being your servant, like Joseph said, you send him home to his father, I will stay and take his punishment. Now, doesn't that sound like Barabbas and Jesus? If Reuben would have had his way, <laughs> well, kill both those thieves. And it says, I believe, in Psalms where Judah ex became greater in the children. But Judah wasn't without sin either. I mean, he, he finds a, a, a wife for his boys. Two of his boys are wicked. God says, Poop, you're dead. He tells the other boy, hey, when, he, when you get of age, then you can have her. Else you're going to die too. I mean, he thought it was the woman. He sends her off. He ends up, you know, his wife dies, becomes a widow. And his sorrow, hey, you know, I'm going to go have my sheep shared. Oh, there, there's a harlot over here. Will you sleep with me? You don't understand the values of, of widowhood. I mean, this guy, and one of his children, including himself, become in the line of Jesus Christ. The house of Esau for stubble. So here's his fire in Jacob. The brother Esau, Edom, who's cursed. Israel, they're stubble. When you put stubble up against fire, there's nothing left. A Christian needs to learn that because one of his losses is wood, hay, or stubble. And everything you get for stubble will be likened to the children of Israel. Yeah. Esau. They shall kindle in them and devour them. That's one of the losses of the judgment seat of Christ. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Israel. I mean, excuse me. Is there, I can't say Isaiah tonight. Uh, Esau, the man with a thousand names. There shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. Did you read that? There will be no Edomites in the millennium. There will be no Edomites in New Jerusalem. Who said that? For the Lord has spoken it. Object plan, lesson learned, don't curse Israel. That goes for United Nuts in New York. That goes for United Nuts on C, the signing C, for oil. That goes for the Arabians. That goes for the Pope with no hope. That goes with the Middle East. That goes with the Ishmaelites. United Kingdom said, hey, you can have the land. Self for decoration. Hey, we've got to give some of it to Jordan. The Jordan, I forget what the decree was called. And then we're going to get the RSV. Uh, Great Britain, England, they're completely destroyed. And yet, you know what's funny? I know people go into England and they preach on the streets and they're left alone. I mean, there's storekeepers that, uh, okay, that's remarkable. 
Over here in America, we got the ASV. We have told, you know, we have gone against Israel in the United Nations and for oil. Because we love oil more than we love God. And with the Gay Pride Month, I have seen pictures over and over of street preachers. And when they show you the police, the police are decked out in SWAT teams. Listen, I have had police called on me in Daytona Beach here, my street meeting. And I've, you know, we, they're conversing with their captain. And I sat there and looked at those police officers and I said, my God. They look like stormtroopers. That's not the cops I grew up as a little boy. They got body cameras. They, they got they got uh, armor, piercing vests. They've got guns. They got the, 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 the electric things. I mean, we're we're turning our police force into. Uh, Darth Vader's stormtrooper. Man, you gotta play, pray for the police force. Today, more than more than enough that, that officer, when he shuts his door, leaving his house and his family, he don't know if he's ever gonna come home. They of the south shall possess the Mount of Esau. That's Israel's territory. I mean. Esau's territory. I gotta stop that. People will possess the land of Edom, but it won't be Edom. They have the plain of the Philistines. That's the other side. They shall possess the fields of Ephraim. That's between Israel and Judah, properly Israel. And the fields of Samaria, that's the capital of Israel. And Benjamin, that's the other son of Rachel, shall possess Gilead. And the captivity of the hosts of the children of Israel shall possess that on the Canaanites. That's the land of Canaan. Even unto Zarephath, the captivity of Jerusalem. Which is in Saphared, shall possess the cities of the south. This is all the inhabited land. And Edom will be left out. Now, are all Edomites like today? Are there any that are saved? The only thing I can say to that, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But if history repeats itself, and it does, when that Antichrist comes into Israel, he's going to have an ally and it's going to be the Edomites. And saviors no capital S, plural, shall come upon Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. That's the second advent into the millennium.